Hi, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm the lead game designer at Goblin Works. Uh, I'm Stephen Cheney. I am a game designer at Goblin Works. Uh, welcome to the first of our Goblin Works video, blo video blog Q&A videos. Uh, as you've probably seen on the forums, we did a post last week asking people for questions about Pathfinder Online. And we're going to be answering uh, a few of them every other week with our video blogs. Uh, and so for this week, we've chosen a question. It was actually the first question that was posed to us, posted by uh, Sephirum, who said, I don't think I'm alone in wanting some more details about divine magic and abilities. So in our system, uh, we have, we've, well, in MMOs in general, equipment is often limited by uh, slots. Like, for example, you have a chest slot. The ta Pathfinder tabletop does the same thing. You have armor slots. You have ring slots. We've kind of expanded that idea. So you have a limited number of uh, slots for skills and abilities at a given time. So we really wanted it to be a, a real choice of, okay, what am I doing right now? i got to get my gear matched up with my abilities I've got slotted because there's interactions between those and make sure that I am as effective as possible in the role I am shooting for. Okay, we can start, we can start with this. Do clerics have cantrips uh, or orisons? Or, yeah, no, or no, yes. no, clerics have orisons. They use what we are currently calling the flag tree. Paizo didn't really like that term, so we're looking for a better one. Uh, but essentially it'll work pretty similar to a mage's wand. You uh, have a charge-based item that you put attacks on and you can slot it as you want based on things you've learned and leveled up. And some of them may have a line of restriction, some of them may not. And th this will effectively function as a cleric version of a weapon. Like if you have a longsword, you slot longsword attacks into it. You have rapier, you slot rapier attacks into it. You have a phylactery, named to be changed. You would slot, you know, a holy light or, or, you know, a weak cures and stuff like that into it. They cost stamina, they, so it means you can use them, you know, multiple times during a given fight. Uh, and you'll generally be throwing them around a lot. Uh, so that that's but, but like wands and staffs, they use charges. They do use charges. So if you you have to be careful, you can't throw them around. You know, unlimited. Right. Uh, the holy symbol for clerics is equivalent to the spellbook for wizards and the trophy charm for fighters. It is their implement, and so all cleric spells that are not orisons, which go on the flag tree, go into the holy symbol. So that there's where you'll get your your cures and your. Anything, any cleric spell from tabletop that we're able to come up with an analog for pretty much goes in there if it's not super low level. For uh, more domain focused abilities or uh, things like channel positive negative energy, those will go in other slots we have uh, that are either called situational slots or utility slots. Utility slots are things you can generally use several times per fight. They consume stamina, meanwhile, situationals are things you can only use a certain amount of, uh, a certain number of times over a longer period because they consume power. So channel, negative, positive energy are both things that consume power, but they do not take up slots in your, in your holy symbol directly. Uh, Sephirim said, I don't think I'm alone in wanting more details about divine magic and abilities. So in talking more of a general sense about what divine magic is going to do, uh, so we need to talk about real quick about another system that we haven't actually talked about in public yet. Uh, so we figure it's a good time to go over because it, it ties into the cleric. Is as we've discussed previously, we don't have critical hits in the way Pathfinder Tabletop does because unpredictable damage spikes are not fun in PvP. Going from being okay to dead with no reason or no not no choice on your part, you didn't know anything was coming, you couldn't do anything about it, just the randomness of suddenly this guy does three to four times as much damage isn't much fun. So we didn't want to do critical hits in the same way, but we wanted to keep the concept. So the system we have, we're working on right now is a system we call the injury system. Every time you get a critical hit on someone, you basically are building, they, they start building up this pool of injury points. If that injury point, if their total number of injury points ever becomes higher than their, hit, their current hit point total, they start suffering a lot of penalties. Our hit points come back every fight. We didn't want hit points to be something that you're constantly, you know, having to go back to town to heal hit points because in an MMO having to stop and you know use very rare resources to heal yourself continually is not a lot of fun but we wanted to still have some impetus that drives you back to town and forces you to make choices about if you can take this fight or not. So we basically have built up the injury system as uh, over time your injuries will build up as you get more and more critical hits to the point where you really should get a cleric to heal you which is we'll get to in a minute or you should go back to town and get rid of them in some other fashion such as 
hanging out at a tavern or, or you know, doing something else. Right. And we, when we previously talked about injuries, we had conceived of them more as sort of uh, modular effects that came off of critical hits, sort of, sort of like other games have done, like bashed head, torn, well, not torn ligament, whatever. And what we realized when we were talking about that in more detail was really just that, A, uh, it was a lot of long-term debuffs for programming to have to track that would be this huge overhead on the system, and you'd have all, the, all these buffs stacking, well, debuffs stacking up in your bar that you'd have, have to keep track of, and that was the sort of the second problem is that it, was, like, it would be impossible for you to parse it in the, in the heat of the moment in combat. You'd see all these injuries, you'd go to mouse over them to see what they are. It's really hard to have a lot of injuries and have each one be meaningful. So what we're doing instead is sort of this very uh, approachable, gameable uh, meter that goes up that somebody can just glance at your hit points and go, he's about to drop below injuries, maybe as the healer I should do something about that. Cleric really has the power to remove injury points from a character. So you know, like in the middle of a fight, the cleric has to make the tactical choice of, okay, if I heal that guy, I may get him out of, I may get his hit points above his injuries and get rid of him that way, or I could just get rid of his injuries or, and after fights, clerics prolong the ability for groups to stay in the field and not have to go back to town to heal stuff because they're able to increase their basically long-term effect to me. Uh, we did want to basically make clerics so they weren't just people who stood in the back and watched bars go up and down because that's not really fun. We, our clerics are very much like Pathfinder. They're medium armor wearers. They probably, you know, you can fight a, play a, you know, a shield mace cleric and go in and, and, you know, beat people up in melee combat. Sure, you're not going to be doing as much damage the, as the fighter, but you can still whip spells at people, you can heal people. The, the cleric's job is not to stand in the back and watch bars go up and down. He's, to, he's supposed to get in, mix it up, heal people as, as he can, and also deal with injuries when they become problematic. We don't really expect healers to just stand in the back and, and heal. And importantly, as with uh, tabletop, most of your heals are touch-based. Like, you have to be in danger to heal somebody. Right, so there is, there, there is no standing in the back with the mages and just healing people. You have to run up to the front, put yourself in harm's way, wear some good armor, and get in there to actually help your team out.